Our guest this week, the head of Kyrgyzstan's provisional government, Rosa Otunbayeva. Ms. Otunbayeva, you've headed the interim government in Kyrgyzstan since President Bakiev was toppled. What are the most important and urgent tasks now? Our most urgent task is to stabilize the situation and return to normalcy. People must feel safe again so that they can go to work, that children can go back to school, and that the schools reopen. Doctors must return to work, and business people need to get back to business. Of course, Bakiev's fate has yet to be decided. He has left the country. Emotions were running high as initial reactions showed. Some people are still angry and believe it was absolutely wrong to let him leave. Mm -hmm. You wanted to put Bakiev on trial, and now? We will definitely bring him to justice. There's no doubt about that. That is now common practice across the world. Heads of state and government who have committed crimes against their countrymen must face responsibility in their home countries. It doesn't matter whether they've taken on some new important post. And it doesn't matter how much time has passed. The people would never forgive us if we let him go without punishment. He sucked the country dry and is living off that now. We will definitely make him stand trial. Five years ago, there was also a revolution in Kyrgyzstan. Hopes were high for a stronger democracy and less corruption. But the reforms were never carried out. What makes you think this time will be different? Corruption is a big problem. Kyrgyzstan has one of the worst rankings on Transparency International's Corruption Index. That says a lot. We are a young country. The bureaucracy and its organs are weak. So are morals. The values that mark most developed countries have yet to take root here. Under those circumstances, it's tragic that we have politicians who seize power with the sole aim of enriching themselves. The story repeats itself again and again. First, it was former President Akayev and now Bakiev. But our democratic institutions are growing stronger. Five years ago, there were no proper political parties that played a meaningful role in political life. Now, parties who once led the opposition are suddenly part of the interim government. We have to strengthen them and help them find their feet. They are facing bigger demands and have to overcome hurdles and become more transparent. We have decided to amend the constitution. Voters will have the final say on that. We want to establish a parliamentary republic, a form of government that's much more balanced than a republic with a strong president. Do you think such reforms will prevent corrupt politicians from seizing power? We believe a parliamentary system will allow us greater control over those in power and help us to limit their powers. 
It will also create more rivalry between the parties and thereby foster new ideas. No dictator or king will come along in the future and say, things will be done as I wish. My son will work here and my brother there. Now the goal is to foster competing ideas and agendas and real deeds. You have already asked Russia for additional humanitarian and financial aid. And Moscow is willing to help. Is Moscow your most important partner now? Russia is our ally and strategic partner. In the 20 years since we gained independence, there have been times when Russia was weak and could not help. Stronger nations stepped in. Now Russia's economy has improved, but we don't want to be used as a proxy in struggles between two nations. We are not a plaything, a toy that can be manipulated and abused. We want to exercise our independence. Our culture dates back centuries, and we fight for our values. Look around, is anyone else fighting for their freedom like my country? We believe it's important that nobody manipulates us. We are very grateful to Russia. Prime Minister Vladimir Putin was the first person to call and ask me, how are you, what happened, can we help? Representatives of other countries called as well. We are very grateful to all our friends. In the past 20 years, we have forged many new alliances. And Russia, Russia and the United States repeatedly try to make their influence felt here. I believe we will no longer allow these games to be played at our expense. Unlike Russia, the U.S. took a while before deciding to keep Bakiyev at arm's length. Did that disappoint you? Actually, I believe the Americans simply could not afford to do otherwise. That has to do with the change in the White House. Since Obama took office, we have noticed that the U.S. has not developed its strategy in Central Asia. Things have remained the same. The U.S. tried to develop a new strategy, but made little progress. And that was because the Americans were bent on keeping their military base here. That was awfully important for them, and that explains the alliance with Bakiev. Bakiev's government offered the U.S. lucrative terms. Will the U.S. base in Manas remain? It is there and operational. There is a contract. We will not deal with that now. That is not our number one priority at present. Ms. Otunbayeva, thank you very much.